players from the entire team. Today, I'm joined by Peyton Chatney. What's your mindset when you step on the mound? When did you learn you were going to be in Orleans? What do you think that feeling is going to be like? Hi, Cape League fans. This is Coach K, manager of the Orleans Firebirds. And I'm here to tell you that Cape League baseball is back this summer, and it's time to meet the Bird King. Welcome to episode one of Meet the Bird Gang 2.0. My name is Noah Searson, and I'll be manning the sidelines all season long for the Orleans Firebirds. Could not be more excited, especially to introduce this new series, where we'll be talking to players from the entire team, kind of getting you guys a chance uh, to meet the players before they actually get to the Cape. And today we are starting off with none other than Marquise Grissom Jr. He's a freshman at Georgia Tech, right-handed pitcher, and a very talented one at that. Marquise, thanks for taking some time today. Thank you for having me. So I'd like to start early on, maybe even before your baseball journey, when you were just a kid, because your dad was a very accomplished MLB player, 17-year career. But what that allowed you to do is, you know, you grew up around baseball, and when you were really young, grew up, around professional baseball, you know, what what was that like for you and what impact did it have on you growing, not only as a child, but maybe, you know, getting interest in the sport? Yeah, it was um, basically, it was like, I, I grew into it. It was almost like, it was something I had to do. And it, it made it, what made it fun is like, I had older brothers that are like 10 years older than me. They were playing and I always wanted to be like them. So what really got me into the sport is just being at the field almost every day with my dad and just watching him, learning from them, and taking some things I could even take back then to bring me to now in my career. And did you have a chance, you know, you obviously got expertise <clears throat> from your father, but did you have a chance to meet, you know, some of the players that he played with and get insight from them too? Yeah, um, I've talked to Shipper Jones, Barry Bonds, players like that and took things when I was even that young. I might not remember everything, but I remember the main, the main picture. And it just what made me wanted me to keep my head head on straight, keep focused and just make sure I'm staying on what I need to do. You know, what what's a piece of insight you've received from one of those players, be it, you know, a legend of the game like Barry Bonds or maybe somebody who was a pitcher too, because of course your dad wasn't a pitcher, but you are. How did how did that transition uh, kind of work out. When did you know you were a pitcher? Well, my dad, my dad was always, he always wanted me to get into pitching and do kind of both because he was drafted as a pitcher. So he, so when I got around 14, 15 and um, he was catching me one time and I was throwing, I was throwing a lot of strikes, hitting this, hitting the spot all the time. He was like, yeah, I think you should try pitching. So I really like more focus more on pitching more than hitting. And then that's how I, it really turned out. And um, also on the pitching side, I had people, I met I met a couple big leaguers that um, gave me some great insight, like David Price, Justin Verlander. I, had, I was blessed to meet them. So yeah, they all gave me good insight that I could take from now. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's a good thing to have pitching insight from Justin Verlander. I certainly think I may have been maybe a little bit of a better pitcher if I would have got insight from him. That's awesome. I. I did a little research on you. Correct me if I'm wrong. You also, you've attended a lot of camps, a lot of, you know, perfect game stuff, but you attended uh, a camp where you received instruction from Andy Pennant, correct? Yes, sir. What was that like? Oh, man, it was um, <clears> the <throat> um, PDP league. Um, it was a lot of, it was a lot of big leaders down there and he was a big one to learn from. And uh, my first bullpen down there, he taught me different grips and where to, keep my landing leg and make sure that um, just make sure that I focus on location and location is the first thing you need to focus on then movement and then velocity velocity always come last because you can't throw past everybody. You say that yet yeah, you are a very hard throwing pitcher, especially for a freshman coming in, you know, what's your mindset when you step on the mound when you know you can throw hard but you also know you want to have that control and hey let's not forget that you do have a pretty good breaking ball in your repertoire as well um, the main focus is to get outs and the best pitch in the game is strike one so that's my main focus because I know if you get strike one you're most likely going to win that at bat so just make sure that I focus on location 
movement and then velocity because I used to be velocity first and that's the problem I got hit around a little bit and then I, I realized something needed to change and um just now I focus on velocity and like I mean I, I'm sorry I don't focus on velocity I focus on location and like location is low in the way is the best target so if you get strike one right there you'll get that bad win and you know you, you had all of these mentors and went to these various different camps and then it was time, you know, to go to college or maybe go to the draft potentially. What was your thought process there? You know, this was recently where you were like, you know, maybe I could uh, hit the minors early. You eventually end up going to Georgia Tech. What was that process like? Man, that was um, days before the draft. I remember I couldn't sleep. I was scared, nervous and just, just that process of having those home visits and having that, it was a good, it was a good thing to learn from, and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that I went to college. Um, I'm glad that it turned out that way, even though uh, with coronavirus and all the stuff with it, with it just being five rounds, I knew it was, it was almost unlikely for me to get drafted, or it wasn't going to be in my, in my liking. So, I just really wanted to focus, and I'm glad I'm here now. Yeah, and you go to Georgia Tech, and it looks like you guys will have a pretty solid season starting in late February. You know, what has that adjustment been like from, you know, you were playing elite club baseball against some great kids, but now you're at a whole nother le level playing college baseball and training with some very talented baseball players. What has that been like? Yeah, it's, um, it seems like everybody's good, and um, the game plays a lot faster. I haven't, I haven't played against competition in a year and a half now, so – it's almost like I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to play, but um, yeah, it just feels like the game's moving faster. You got, it's, you got to be quick to adjust and learn from things. So I'm ready to play. And when's the last time you've actually played a game? March, uh, I was at the PG showdown, at high school showdown in March 9th. That was the last game. That was the last tournament I played in. What do you think that feeling is going to be like stepping on the diamond for the first time because I'm guessing this is probably the longest that you've gone without playing an actual baseball game in an extremely long time. Absolutely, it's it's been forever. I just I can't wait to step on there. I felt I felt excitement when I just got on the round in um in inner squads. It's just like wow. It's, it seems like I haven't did this in a very long time. It's almost like I don't even know. I just ain't never. I've never had that feeling before. It's just excitement so I'm ready to get out there and do whatever coach tells me to do and you know looking forward to this season what can we expect out of you do you know at all what your role is going to be with the team uh, I'm not sure but whatever whatever you, whatever coach has me do I'm gonna do it I don't I don't care if it's the ball boy the bat boy <laughs> outfield infield on the mound relief closer I'll do it all righty. I like that. He's a team player. Very good for the Firebirds to have this season. And let's look ahead a little bit. I know, you know, the Firebird season probably seems way in the future for you, but it's actually coming up sooner rather than later. How'd you land in the Cape? You know, it's, it's kind of an interesting process how players, you know, get chosen for different teams. How did that process go for you? And, you know, what was your reaction uh, when you knew that you were going to be a Firebird this summer? To be honest with you, I um I didn't have too much um knowledge of what the Cape Cod was at first. So um Coach Hall pulled me aside one day and he was like, um, I got you a summer team and you're gonna be playing in the Cape this summer. So I was excited because it sound is he sounded like it was very excited. So I was like, Okay. So I asked a couple of teammates, like, what is it and who am I playing for? And and uh, they told me everything it's about. And I've seen all the alumni who all been in the Cape, and I'm excited to come. Well, you know the big one, right? Marcus Stroman had one of the greatest seasons in Cape League history. He played for Orleans. You think you'll be, you know, matching up toe-to-toe -to -toe with anything he did when he was with the Firebirds? Uh, that's, that's the idea. I mean, I'm just trying to work hard and try to get there. I'm, I'm just ready. I'm just excited to play. <laughs> I'm trying to play at all, any time, so – yeah, I mean, Marcus Stroman, I had a few talks with him. He um he talked to the team recently. So it's just good. It's good to know that he was right there and I could possibly do what he did. 
Yeah, have you been talking with the team at all? How much communication has there been there with the actual players on the team, I should say? Um, with the Cape Cod team? Yeah. Uh, not not that much, but I'm I'm starting to I'm starting to get it now. It's been uh, mostly been focused on education right now, so that's the main focus right now. I've been as soon as I get that a little settled down, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get um my summer prepared. I forget that you're only a freshman, which is, you know, crazy to think about. So you got other things going on. What has that transition been like, not only for baseball, but just for life? And just with um, the coronavirus and all, it's just been, it's been different. I just, it's kind of, it's, it's hard to adjust to, you know, socially distanced classes in my dorm room and um, just, it's basically about time management. If you get your time management down, you get just do the work, you'll get it done. So it's mainly about time management. It's really, it's really a lot mental. I, I feel, I feel like it's very mental on you. And then so, with the working out part, you work out, and then after practice, you just go straight to the books. So it's almost like home then or dorm room then uh, practice, dorm room, then workouts. But it's actually a very, very nice experience. And um, even though it's bad history, I mean, we're living in history right now. So, I mean, I, I'm like, I, 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 it's not a lot of people I can talk to and say I, they've been through college, through the coronavirus, through a pandemic. So, I mean, I, I like any experience I can have right now. Well, and just to give the people who are watching this, the fans, you know, the full perspective of what you're saying, because I understand as a college student, I understand what you're saying to an extent, but I think for some people, it may be kind of hard. Take me through a day in the life of Marquise Grissom Jr. right now. Okay, so I'm going to do my Monday schedule. Monday schedule, morning workouts around 6.37, then um, 8.25 class. I also have a 9.30 class. And then I have the one more class at 12.30, from 12.30 to 1.20. And then I have practice from like 2 to 6. And then when I leave from there, I'll probably eat. And then just get right back to the books until around 10. And I try to I try to get sleep by like 10.30, 11, because, I mean, it's important for an athlete to sleep. So it's important for anybody to sleep. But I just, just make sure I, I wasn't really sleeping that well in high school. So... Now I got time to sleep and just get my body right for the next day. That's absolutely crazy. That's a packed schedule and respect to you for getting to sleep by 11. I never can. It, it's one of the hardest things ever, but that's awesome. You know, we're, we're winding down on the amount of time we have today, but before I let you go, we've learned a lot about you, you know, as a baseball player, but I'd like to learn a little more about you as a person. So we're going to do something that I would like to call the squeeze much like the play in baseball you know it's kind of chaotic fast paced you know you really don't know how it's going to turn out so I'm going to ask you a series of questions I'm going to put one minute on the clock and we're just going to fire through a bunch of questions you think you up for it got you let's do it all right I'm going to put one minute on the clock right now and we will go starting right now first activity what has been your go-to quarantine activity Video games. Video games? What video game? Uh, 2K, MLB, the show, any sports games usually. Any sports games? No Warzone? Yeah. Oh, of course. Of course I'm on Warzone. <laughs> of course. Of a, course. Yeah, Call of Duty in sports, basically. Uh, that's awesome. All right, second question, and this may be a trick one. Favorite baseball player growing up? <laughs> um, my dad. I okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Other than your dad, though, that because you had to say your dad there. Um, I'll say, I'll say Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds. Just, just being around him when I was around four and five years old, and what he's taught me. Like I seen him lift in the weight room before and after the game, so he was good to learn from. All right, who's on the pregame playlist? Hmm. Um, Future. Uh, sometimes reggae. So I got Soldier in there. Okay. Um, yeah, just mostly, I, I like to change it up a lot. So, uh, I, I'll get, I have Goofy sometimes, have SpongeBob in there because SpongeBob is SpongeBob. my favorite. SpongeBob is my favorite of all time. What's SpongeBob song? Goofy Goober. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, but I watch every SpongeBob episode ever. So, 
Really? That's that's yeah. I'm a big SpongeBob fan. Well, question for you: Did you watch the Nickelodeon broadcast of the NFL playoff game? I did. I did. I seen SpongeBob in the field goal. Yeah, I see. I seen all of that. That was that was amazing. Noah Eagle and Nate Burleson did a great job on that one. I'm now realizing we went way over a minute, and I have a, a, a thorough list of more questions that we didn't get to. Uh, you know, this is my first interview, too. Um, you know, so we're getting the hang of it, but hopefully we learn a lot more cool things as we get going, as we get going into the season uh, and have a lot of fun. One more question, though, before I let you go. You know, I want to give people – the fans of Orleans, a tease. And I want you to paint the picture and tell me, you know, why they should be excited for you to be on the Orleans Firebirds this season. What should they be looking forward to? Well, it's a hard worker. Um, I'm, I'm going to come out there. And um, the three things I always do is hustle, be a great teammate, and keep a positive attitude. And that's what I'm bringing to the table. All righty. There you go. He's a good teammate folks even better person and we can't wait to have you in orleans this summer marquise thanks for sharing some of your time today thank you